Did you know that choosing the right Amazon category and keywords can skyrocket your book to bestseller status? Have you ever wondered how some authors seem to easily find their perfect niche on Amazon, attracting thousands of readers? Today, we're diving into the secret sauce of successful Amazon publishing, and it all starts with smart research. Stick around to discover how you can use powerful tools like Katie Spy and Publisher Rocket not only to find your place in the Amazon ecosystem, but to dominate it. Let's get started. Welcome to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, and on this channel, we explore how emerging technologies and AI can enhance our craft and lives as writers. Last week, during the series business plan, we took a deep dive into identifying our target audience and understanding what resonates with them. This week, we're taking it a step further. We're not just writing a book, but strategically positioning it in the market. The difference between a hidden gem and a bestseller often lies in how well you navigate the Amazon marketplace. And that's exactly what we're going to master today. But first, why does this matter? In the vast ocean of books on Amazon, being in the right category and using the right keywords can be like a beacon, guiding readers straight to your work. It's not just about being seen, it's about being seen by the right people, your future readers. So, how do we do this? We're going to use a mix of intuition, hard data, and some nifty tools. Remember, while tools like KD Spy and Publisher Rocket are powerful, they're just instruments. The real magic happens when you combine these tools with a deep understanding of your audience and your book's unique value. Today, I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of researching categories and keywords that align with your book. We'll look at how to analyze competition, trends, and most importantly, how to make data-driven decisions that boost your book's chances of success. Ready to turn your amazing book idea into an Amazon chart topper? Let's roll up our sleeves and get into the nuts and bolts of smart Amazon research. Now, let's take a moment to zoom in on our audience for this series. Remember, understanding your audience is a cornerstone of writing to market effectively. In our video last week, we identified our primary audience for this mid-grade fiction blueprint series. Let's break it down. Our target readers are predominantly 12-year-old boys. These young readers are drawn to light horror, suspense, and mystery genres. Think of the chills and thrills that keep you on the edge, but still safe enough to explore. They love immersing themselves in worlds like those of Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, where adventure and mystery blend seamlessly. When they're not reading, they're often engaged in games like Minecraft, Pokemon, and Roblox. These games reflect a love for exploration, problem solving, and a bit of the supernatural. Another key interest is Five Nights at Freddy's, which blends suspense with a touch of horror. An important consideration for our audience is that many of these young readers have ADHD and dyslexia. This means we need to be particularly mindful about our formatting and storytelling pace. Our goal is to keep them engaged and ensure that the reading experience is comfortable and enjoyable for them. This insight is not just crucial for writing our book, but also for marketing it correctly. Having this deep understanding of our audience shapes not just the content of our book, but how we present it to the world. Now, why is this a crucial insight when selecting Amazon categories and keywords? Think of Amazon as more than just a bookstore. It's a search engine for readers. The categories and keywords that you choose are like signposts that guide your specific audience. In our case, 12-year-old fans of light horror, suspense, and mystery directly to your book. It's about making your book visible and appealing to those who are looking to enjoy it. Now, let's head to Amazon and start doing our research. Okay, folks, now we are here in Amazon. And note that I am not signed in. This is actually a separate browser that I use specifically for research. And the only plugin that I have installed is KD Spot. I also clear the cache on this pretty often. So nothing that I have looked at in the past is going to influence what we find when we're doing our research. So let's go ahead. And since we know our audience is interested in the Percy Jackson series, let's go ahead and put that in. So we'll put in Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And let's see, here we go. It's really popular right now. Let's look at the Kindle version. Okay, great. Let's scroll down here. And what I'm looking for is right here. So bestseller rank. So it's number one in the children's Greek and Roman myths. It's also 
number one in the children's literature, and it is also number three in the children's ebooks. Okay, this is going to be a hard one to compete with. I was specifically looking because it, it used to show up in one of the categories that I was interested in putting our books in, but it's not showing up because it's doing really well overall. It's 484 in the Kindle store. So let's go back up here. And another thing that our audience is interested in is the Five Nights at Freddy's. And Five Nights at Freddy's actually has a book series. Okay, I don't actually want the movie. I want the Kindle book. So I'm going to be a little more specific. Come here to Kindle store. And here we go. I don't want the novel. Here we go. This is the original book in the trilogy. And I'm going to come down here and look for, here we go, down here to the bestseller rank. And so we've got teen and young adult media tie-in books. Not interested in that. I'm actually interested in this children's scary stories. So let's go ahead and click this and see what it shows us. Okay. Percy Jackson is actually number one in this series right now. This one is, yep, 949 in the total bookstore. So I was thinking, because our audience is interested in the light horror, that I, we might go with scary stories. But let's use Katie Spy and see what it has to say. Okay. So. From here, this is pulling results from number one to number 20. I actually like to pull all the way to number 40. And that's just a personal preference. So we're going to give it a second here to go ahead and pull all the way to number 40. Okay. There we go. So we can see here the total monthly revenue, and this is an estimate. Do not take this as gospel. This is about what the revenue is for the top 40 books in this category. It's showing that the popularity is yellow. So this category has a rather average popularity with mediocre sales volumes. And that's fine. This is our first book. I'm not upset about that at all. Also, it's got potential. So the revenue potential in this category is very good. And then under competition, it shows... You can easily compete here for a first page category ranking. Okay. So if we're looking if we're looking at the sales rank, we're looking at number 40 here has 62,000. Obviously, if we're aiming for something in the 2000 range whenever we launch our book, this would be great. So that we could honestly be up to maybe number four. And we're definitely not going to be able to compete with the Percy Jackson series, but that gives you an idea. We can see there's lots of reviews. Again, we're looking at the Rick Riordan Percy Jackson series. There's lots of those for here. And then they peter off a little bit. It looks like there's quite a few books here. Coraline, Ella Enchanted. All of these have movies. Lockwood & Co. I think, if I remember correctly, they have a maybe a Netflix series, I think, on that. But the rank is pretty high. So I definitely think we can compete to at least get on the first page. And then we can do a little bit more research, probably find a category where we can get to number one. But let's go ahead and take a look over here at the word cloud. Here we go. So we can see here that some of the words that are keywords for these books, we've got survive, choose, can, doomsday, co, adventure, Lockwood, and scary. Some of the things that we can look at whenever we're doing our keyword research to see if we can include them in our book. Okay. One other thing I want to show you while we're here, I want to show you this insights. Now, if you use AI, like I do, you can actually come over here and grab this prompt and put it in your chat GPT and it'll spit out some great series ideas. So I'm actually going to do this next week 
But I just wanted to let you know that it is here if you happen to get Katie Spy. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to go and we're going to look at some keywords. Okay, folks, here we are inside of Publisher Rocket. This is what it looks like when you just log in. And we're going to start doing our keyword research. There's some other tabs here. And if you guys are interested, I can always go through and do a full tutorial. So let me know if you want to see that. But for now, let's go ahead and come in here. We're going to do keyword research. And I'm going to switch this over to Kindle only for now. You can also search Audible as well as books. And if you remember from last week, we are going to be doing a paperback edition of this book as well. But I want to start with the Kindle only. So I made a quick list over here. And I am going to just start going through some of the keywords that I identified that might lead me to what will become my eventual end keywords. So I'm going to start with mid-grade stories. And I'm going to hit go get them rocket. And it looks like it didn't bring up any other suggestions, but let's go ahead and take a look at the information here. So we've got average number of pages, the number of competitors, average price, average monthly earnings, as well as the average, or excuse me, the estimated Amazon searches per month, and also a competitive score. And the competitive score is going to be it uses a um, traffic light system. So if it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, then it's eh. And if it's red, it's really competitive, as we'll see. So apparently, mid-grade stories, there are some books, about 99 they say, that use mid-grade stories, but it's not a really good keyword. Okay, that's fine. Let's come back here. New search. Remember, we're going to do Kindle only. Mid-grade fiction. And let's see what it has to go. Go get them, Rocket. Okay, mid-grade fiction. Okay, so average of 89 pages. There's 146 uh, competitors. Average price is $3. Apparently, this one isn't a really good one either. And it does have a bit of a, a competition. So it's got a 65 for competition. Again, I'm striking out here, guys. Okay, let's use one of the ones that was recommended in that word cloud from Katie's five. We're going to use Doomsday. So let's go get him. Here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. So let's take a look at Doomsday and see. Okay, so we've got an a average of 354 pages. There's more than a thousand competitors. Average price is $7. Average monthly earnings is over 1,539 searches, which isn't great. And it's got a competitive score of 58, which is moderately competitive. So let's scroll down here and see. We've got Doomsday Book, Doomsday Clock, Doomsday Hunter, Doomsday Recon. Uh, let's see what else. Doomsday Fiction. Let's see what this has to say. But that's a note, guys, because there's less than 100. I probably wouldn't use this one. Girl, Haven, Hunter. You definitely don't want to. This one talks about a Dresden Codex. You don't want to use a keyword that's another author's name or a book name. Uh, here we go. Doomsday Mom, Doomsday Men, Nonfiction, Prepper, Papers, Romance. Uh, Let's see. Nothing's really capturing my attention. So let's try something else. Let's try light horror, which is one of the genres that we picked out for our person. Let's go here. Light horror. And we've got light horror books. Okay, so 131, 251, quite a bit of competition, but not very much search volume. How about scary stories? I'm hoping this one will give us some more ideas. 
Okay, scary stories. 81 competitive, 474 searches per month, decent earnings, quite a bit of competition. So let's see, scary stories for kids. Let's try that one. Ooh, this is even better. So we've got 144 pages, a pretty big group there. Uh, earnings are a little bit down, but we have a lot more searches per month. And the competitiveness is lower. So Scary Stories for Kids is one that I'm going to want to hold on to. And I'll actually throw it onto my page here. Okay, Scary Story for Kids, 7 to 10. Let's look at Scary Stories for 11-year-olds. We're not doing 11-year-olds. We're going to be pretty, pretty close. But okay, here we go. 181, 143. So if we get down to Scary Stories for 11-year-olds, the competition's like way, way down. But we also don't have very many searches. So maybe Scary Stories for middle schoolers. Here we got here. Ooh, here we go. 215 is the average pages, number of competitors is much lower, average price is a little bit lower, but our monthly earning potential is much higher. Uh, less than 100 searches, but the competition is way low. Since these are some of the people we want to show our book to, let's go ahead and grab that one. And here we go. We've got Scary Story Kids. Let's look at this one. Okay, so maybe not this one. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to go through and figure out what are going to be some of the best keywords for this book that are going to put it into the path of the right folks. So I'm actually going to work on this on my own, probably over the weekend. And I will update my serious business plan to show you what I came up with. And we can talk about it uh, as well next week because next week we're actually going to start building the series. So one more thing I want to show you before we go is Kalytics. It's a tool that you can use. Data is their thing. And they create these really cool, very interactive reports and analysis uh, for different genres to give you a leg up on other people. And it's a way to shortcut what I was taking you through. It's expensive, but they provide in-depth look at different categories and help you pinpoint exactly where your book fits in the Amazon landscape. And they actually have a free, I want to say it's like a free trial, but it's not a free trial. As we wrap up today's session, let's do a quick recap. We dove into the importance of selecting the right Amazon categories and keywords. And we explored how tools like KD Spy, Publisher Rocket, and even Kalytics can drastically streamline this process. Remember, the goal is to position your book precisely where your audience is most likely to find it and fall in love with it. If today's journey into the world of Amazon research has sparked some new ideas for your writing journey, hit the like button and subscribe to Bite Size Booksmith. Your support is incredibly valuable and helps this channel continue to bring technology and creativity together. Now, I'm curious, how do you approach market research for your books? Have you used any of these tools before? What's your experience? Or is there another tool that you swear by? Drop your thoughts and insights into the comments below. I'm excited to read your experience and learn from your strategies. Thank you for tuning in today. And remember to join us next week as we dive into the last step in the pre-writing phase, coming up with the series idea. Don't forget, that the right research can take your book from hidden in the depths of Amazon to shining in the spotlight. Keep exploring, keep innovating, and I'll see you in the next video.